In this video, we will be discussing what is in my opinion the most significant piece of UFO news to come out over the past two years that is not being discussed by the mainstream media nor by the UFO community. The Five Continents International UFO Forum The Five Continents International UFO Forum is a new Chinese-based international UFO organization that is attempting to bring about UFO disclosure at the United Nations. The United Nations is an intergovernmental organization responsible for maintaining international peace and security, developing friendly relations among nations, achieving international cooperation, and being a center for harmonizing the actions of nations. It seems like the United Nations would be the perfect place for a global UFO disclosure, and there have been attempts at this in the past. Today, it seems like China is making moves to bring about global UFO disclosure. So let's look at the history of previous UFO disclosure attempts at the United Nations, and what the Five Continents International UFO Forum has been doing recently to bring about global UFO disclosure. The first major attempt to bring the subject of UFOs to the floor of the United Nations occurred in 1967. Yu Thant, a Burmese diplomat, was the first non-European to be elected to Secretary General of the United Nations in 1961. Yu Thant facilitated negotiations between US President John F. Kennedy and Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev during the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, ordered Operation Grand Slam, which ended a secessionist insurgency in the Congo, and was highly critical of the United States' involvement in the Vietnam War. Uthant was also personally interested in UFOs and confided in friends that he viewed the UFO issue as the most important issue facing the United Nations. In 1967, Uthant arranged for James McDonald to give a UFO presentation at the United Nations Outer Space Affairs Group with the hope that a member nation would sponsor the issue and bring it to the General Assembly. Newspaper articles from the time read as follows. In the very middle of the Near East crisis, UN Secretary General Thant took time to do a very significant thing. He arranged to have one of the top advocates of the theory that flying saucers, UFOs, are from another planet speak before the Outer Space Affairs Committee at the UN. Interesting fact is that Yu Thant has confided in friends that he considers UFOs the most important problem facing the UN next to the war in Vietnam. McDonald asked UN to begin study of UFOs. University of Arizona physicist James E. McDonald is trying to persuade the United Nations to begin a global study of unidentified flying objects. At the request of Secretary General Yu Thant, McDonald briefed the United Nations Outer Space Affairs Group in New York last week. An appointment with Yu Thant was canceled at the last minute because the war in the Mideast reached a crisis point in the Security Council. Apparently, Yu Thant is very much interested in the problem, said McDonald, senior physicist of the University of Arizona Institute of Atmospheric Physics. Ultimately, no member country was willing to sponsor the issue and bring it to the attention of the General Assembly. James McDonald would return to the United States and face ridicule for his support of seriously addressing the UFO phenomena, which led to him being publicly mocked at congressional hearings, his wife leaving him, and ultimately him committing suicide a few years after the United Nations address. The next major attempt to bring UFOs to the General Assembly was in 1978 and was led by Grenada Prime Minister Sir Eric Gary. Grenada is a small Caribbean island off the coast of Venezuela, and Sir Eric Gary was the first Prime Minister of Grenada following their independence from Great Britain in 1974. Sir Eric Gary was also interested in UFOs and in 1978 attempted to bring the issue to the United Nations. The country of Grenada sponsored Lee Spiegel to create a presentation to present at the United Nations. Lee Spiegel was a journalist and UFO researcher who in 1975 released the album UFOs, The Credibility Factor, published by CBS. This album contained lectures by Major Donald E. Kehoe, Congressman and Chairman of the 1968 Congressional Symposium on UFOs J. Edward Roosh, Project Blue Book investigator Dr. J. Allen Hynek, United States Air Force Major Paul Deutsch, McDonnell Douglas radar expert Dr. Robert Wood, Stanton Friedman, and many others. Sir Eric Gary had heard Lee Spiegel's album, and in April of 1978, Lee Spiegel received the following letter from the Grenada government. Dear Mr. Spiegel, the Prime Minister and I wish to congratulate you on your presentation concept regarding UFOs. We concur in your belief of the urgency to establish a global network which will seriously and openly conduct research into the UFO phenomenon. As you know, Grenada is one of many nations which believe in the timeliness of UFOs and their ultimate importance to man's knowledge of himself and our planet Earth. We are personally committed to this goal 
and would be very interested in sponsoring your proposal when the United Nations General Assembly reconvenes later this year. Sir Gary and I look forward to working closely with you and seeing that this UFO investigation agency becomes a reality. Very sincerely yours, Francis M. Redhead. Lee Spiegel was appointed as a delegate by Granada to prepare a UFO presentation for the United Nations. Steven Spielberg, who at that time was working on the film Close Encounters of the Third Kind, prepared graphics for Lee Spiegel's presentation. Lee Spiegel began collecting people to present at the United Nations, and they held a preliminary meeting with then-Secretary General Kurt Waldheim. Going clockwise, from left to right, we see astronaut Gordon Cooper, astronomer Jacques Vallée, astrophysicist Claude Poer, astronomer J. Allen Hynek, Granada Prime Minister Sir Eric Gary, UN Secretary General Kurt Waldheim, Morton Glazner of the Special Political Committee, Lee Spiegel, researcher Len Stringfield, and University of Colorado psychologist David Saunders. Astronaut Gordon Cooper was unable to attend the actual presentation in front of the assembly, but wrote the following letter to be presented. Dear Ambassador Griffith, I wanted to convey to you my views on our extraterrestrial visitors, popularly referred to as UFOs, and suggest what might be done to properly deal with them. I believe that these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews are visiting this planet from other planets, which obviously are a little more technically advanced than we are here on Earth. I feel that we need to have a top-level, coordinated program to scientifically collect and analyze data from all over the Earth concerning any type of encounter, and to determine how best to interface with these visitors in a friendly fashion. We may first have to show them that we have learned to resolve our problem by peaceful means, rather than warfare, before we are accepted as fully qualified Universal Team members. This acceptance would have tremendous possibilities of advancing our world in all areas. Certainly, then, it would seem that the UN has a vested interest in handling this subject properly and expeditiously. I should point out that I am not an experienced UFO professional researcher. I have not yet had the privilege of flying a UFO, nor of meeting the crew of one. I do feel that I am somewhat qualified to discuss them, since I have been into the fringes of the vast areas in which they travel. Also, I did have occasion in 1951 to have two days of observation of many flights of them, of different sizes, flying in fighter formation, generally from east to west over Europe. They are at a higher altitude than we could reach with our fighter jets at the time. I would also like to point out that most astronauts are very reluctant to even discuss UFOs, due to the great numbers of people who have indiscriminately sold fake stories and forged documents abusing their names and reputations without hesitation. Those few astronauts who have continued to have a participation in the UFO field have had to do so very cautiously. There are several of us who do believe in UFOs, and who have had occasion to see a UFO on the ground or from an airplane. There is only one occasion from space which may have been a UFO. If the UN agrees to pursue this project and to lend their credibility to it, perhaps many more well-qualified people will agree to step forth and provide help and information. I am looking forward to seeing you soon. Gordon Cooper, Colonel, United States Air Force, retired, astronaut. And on November 27, 1978, the rest of the crew presented in front of the General Assembly. The presentations culminated in Granada submitting a proposal to create a global coalition to investigate UFOs and prepare for any kind of contact. The slogan of the proposal, which was called Agenda Item 126, reads as follows. Agenda Item 126, Establishment of an Agency or Department of the United Nations for undertaking, coordinated, and disseminating the results of research into unidentified flying objects and related phenomena. The presentation was well received by the General Assembly. So well received that the UN circulated a cable on December 8th promoting nations interested in the proposal to conduct their own research and bring it back to the Assembly where they discuss it further. The General Assembly invites interested member states to take appropriate steps to coordinate on a national level scientific research and investigation into extraterrestrial life, including unidentified flying objects, and to inform the Secretary General of the observations, research, and evaluation of such activities. However, not all countries were supportive of Grenada's actions. Great Britain was particularly opposed to Grenada's proposal. D. A. Lloyd of the Energy Science and Space Department in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office prepared a short, now declassified brief dated the 15th of September, 1978. Agenda Item Number 128, Establishment of an Agency or Department of the United Nations for Undertaking, Coordinating, and Disseminating the Results of Research into Unidentified Flying Objects and Related Phenomena. To oppose the establishment of any such agency, 
The British delegation does not think that the establishment of an agency for research into unidentified flying objects is appropriate to the functions of the United Nations. It considers that the existence of such an agency under UN auspices would be an unjustifiable drain on UN resources, which could be better deployed elsewhere. Hopefully, a confrontation with the representative of Grenada can be avoided, but the UK should not hesitate to make its views known as and when appropriate. You should seek whatever support you can particularly get among the nine. Surprisingly, the American delegation though not supportive, was not opposed like the British. Erwin M. Pikus of the State Department's Bureau of Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs created a draft position entitled Agenda Item, a UN agency for UFOs, which states, The U.S. has no objection to the inclusion of these matters on the agenda. The U.S. has conducted extensive studies of this subject in years past, and these studies have been inconclusive. While the results of past studies have been and will continue to be made available, the U.S. has no interest in participating actively in further studies. The budgetary implications of the Granada proposal should be examined. The U.S. has no objection to the allocation of nominal sums to these proposals. The agenda item proposed by the Granada Prime Minister would be received pretty well given the subject matter, and it was agreed that further discussions would continue in the coming sessions to further develop a plan. However, this proposal would quickly lose its wings when Sir Eric Gehry was ousted by a socialist coup led by Gregory Bishop just four months after the UN UFO presentation. The Caribbean island of Grenada, a paradise for tourists, but now the center of the world's latest coup d'etat. It happened on March the 13th, when a revolutionary party overthrew the government of Prime Minister Sir Eric Gehry. Among the findings was evidence of Gary's interest in voodoo and witchcraft. Sir Eric Gary was forced to flee the country and live in exile in the United States. Interestingly, the new socialist government of Grenada would be forced out in 1983 by the U.S. invasion of Grenada, the first major use of the U.S. military since the Vietnam War. Without Sir Eric Gary spearheading the initiative, and with no other countries willing to sponsor it, the UN proposal for a global coalition to address UFOs soon died. Now before we look at what China has been doing regarding the UN, let's first take a quick look at ufology in China. I will cover this topic in greater detail for another video but there are some things to be aware of when understanding the Chinese UN initiative. The most prominent UFO group in China is the Chinese UFO Association, which was created in 1999 and is run by Mr. Jin Fan. This group is dedicated to researching the UFO phenomena and since its creation in 1999 has held annual meetings with delegates from smaller regional UFO groups all throughout China. The Chinese UFO Association also publishes UFO magazines that are distributed throughout the country and today, the Chinese UFO Association boasts over 1 million members, with many members coming from respected positions within academia, the government, the military, and the private sector. Now it should be noted that the fact China even allows this organization to exist and operate is significant. China does not have freedom of assembly, and any group that wishes to exist, especially at this level, must get explicit permission from the Chinese government and Communist Party. China is an officially atheistic country that strictly prohibits any fringe beliefs other than the major world religions. To emphasize this point, let's look at Falun Gong. Falun Gong arose out of the so-called Qigong boom of the late 80s. Qigong is an umbrella term for a number of practices involving meditation, slow-moving exercises, and regulated breathing. Qigong groups exploded during this time, attracting tens of millions of mostly urban and elderly Chinese. Eventually, in 1999, the same year of the creation of the Chinese UFO Association, the Chinese government declared Falun Gong a cult and strictly prohibited anyone in the country from practicing it, and many of the leaders were arrested, effectively ending the movement overnight. Another example of China's control over fringe beliefs can be found in their strict prohibition on media depicting spirits and ghosts. Chinese films are not allowed to have depictions of ghosts, as it goes against the Communist Party's policies. To get around this, many Chinese films that wish to feature these themes, like horror films, are forced to end their movies with the classic trope of all the events being a dream, as to conform with the Chinese government policy. Now, both of these subjects are quite controversial, but I bring them up to highlight how significant it is for China to even allow the Chinese UFO Association to exist, 
And because of Chinese communist policies, the Chinese UFO Association strictly focuses on the nuts and bolts side of ufology, and steers clear of some of the more paranormal aspects. During the weekend of July 30th, 2018, the Chinese UFO Association hosted American UFO researcher Don Schmidt and American UFO documentary filmmaker James Fox to attend the opening of a Roswell exhibit in Chongqing, China that also coincided with the Chinese UFO Association's annual meeting. Don Schmidt is a UFO researcher who has dedicated his life to researching the Roswell UFO incident and was one of J. Allen Hynek's last apprentices before Hynek's passing. James Fox is a documentary filmmaker who made the films Out of the Blue in 2003, I Know What I Saw in 2014, and is currently working on a new project called Phenomenon. Also present in Chongqing was the Granada ambassador to China, Denis Antoine, and cosmonaut Anatoly Artsebarsky. Interestingly, cosmonaut Anatoly Artsebarsky was in orbit during the fall of the Soviet Union with Helen Patricia Sharman, the first Briton in space. Helen Sharman was recently in the news for claiming that aliens definitely exist and they might be living among us. The Roswell exhibit was a success and it was here that Jin Fan, president of the Chinese UFO Association, announced an initiative to set up a global UFO research organization. It was decided that a new meeting would be held in October of 2018 in Moscow to set up this global UFO research initiative, which was now being called the Five Continents Forum and the following invitation was sent to established UFO researchers from all over the globe. The First Five Continents Forum Moscow Organizing Committee Invitation Letter The International UFO High-End Summit is held in Chongqing City on July 30th, 2018. Representatives from seven countries' regions attending the conference jointly propose the establishment of the International Union Five Continents Forum. Hereby we, the Five Continents Forum Conference Organizing Committee sincerely invite you to attend the meeting and join our forum organization to become a member. Venue, Cosmos Hotel, Moscow, Russia. Date, the 16th and 17th of October, 2018. Confirmed deadline before the 10th of September, 2018. Visa and flight tickets. The organizing committee may issue the Russian invitation letter for you to get your visa. We will pay for the round trip economy class ticket and hotel accommodation. The event will also be held at the Cosmos Hotel. Limited seats. Please confirm whether to attend the activity before September 10th, 2018. Confirmation after that, we can't arrange free airport pickup. Five Continents Forum, Conferencing Organizing Committee. The first Five Continents Forum meeting was held in October of 2018 at the Cosmos Hotel in Moscow, Russia. All accommodations and flights for the participating ufologist were paid for by the government of Hazy, and Hazy City will be the location of the new official international building for the Five Continents Forum. This is another very significant action. The fact a municipal government within China used Chinese government funds to pay for the travel of ufologists from around the world to come to the inaugural meeting of a new intercontinental UFO organization is major. It was said that there was even a competition between several municipalities in China to be the home of the new organization, and it is rumored that Hazy City will be the home of the Five Continents International Building because that it is the hometown of the current First Lady of China, who is allegedly very interested in UFOs. Let's listen to the opening statements of Jin Fan, President of the Chinese UFO Association, and the opening statements of Mr. Wang Wei Dong, the mayor of Hazy City, the city that sponsored the event and will be the home of the Five Continents Forum International Building. Today, I'm the 
На этой торжественной ноте я прошу всех собравшихся ознаменовать открытие первого глобального форума «Пять континентов» горячими аплодисментами. 牡丹之都同时也是中国现在第一夫人的家乡人口有一千零一十九万和着历史悠久环境优美人杰地灵我了解到我们这个福州国际论坛是以太空探索和助推新科学的发展作为主子我认为这是一个非常高端的定位 among the ufologists present were Donald R. Schmidt, representing the USA. As previously stated, Donald Schmidt is one of the leading Roswell researchers in the U.S. and former co-director of the J. Allen Hynek Center for UFO Studies. Gary Heseltine, representing the United Kingdom. Gary Heseltine founded the Police Reporting UFO Sightings Database in 2002, exclusively for British Police UFO Sighting Reports. He has amassed over 425 cases involving more than 900 British police officers. Hesseltine is the founder and editor of UFO Truth magazine. Andrea Perez Simondini, representing Argentina. Andrea is the president of the Commission for the Study of the UFO Phenomena of the Republic of Argentina and is an editor of Vision OVNI, one of Latin America's most popular online UFO magazines that also catalogs Latin American cattle mutilation cases. AJ Givad, representing Brazil. A.J. Guevad is the founder and director of the Brazilian Center for Flying Saucer Research and Brazilian director of MUFON. He is also an editor of Revista UFO, Brazil's most popular UFO magazine. In the early 2000s, A.J. Guevad successfully led a movement petitioning the Brazilian government to release some of their UFO files. Dr. Lachizar Filipov, representing Bulgaria. Dr. Filipov is the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, Space and Technology Research Institute Head of Astrophysical and Space Dynamics Department, and is the leading UFO researcher in Bulgaria. Dr. Roberto Pinotti, representing Italy. Dr. Roberto Pinotti is a sociologist, journalist, and aerospace expert. Dr. Pinotti is the president of the Centro Ufologico Nacional, Italy's most authoritative UFO organization and Dr. Pinotti is the editor of its official monthly magazine, UFO Notisario. Dr. Anthony Choi, representing Peru. Dr. Choi is a lawyer, writer, investigative journalist, lecturer, and radio producer. He is the host of the radio program, Travel to Another Dimension, and is the director of the Peruvian Association of Ufology. Jaime Maussan, representing Mexico. Jaime Maussan is a journalist and the leading ufologist in Mexico. Hakten Aktogan representing Turkey. Hakten Agdogan is the founder and chairman of the Sirius UFO Space Science and Research Center, founded in 1995 in Turkey. He also teaches a course on ufology at Akadans University, which is among the top public universities in Turkey, and is the founder of the first international UFO museum of Europe, Balkans, and the Middle East. Dr. Gabor Tarsali, representing Hungary. Dr. Tarsali is a professor at the University of Debrecen in the Department of Plant Protection, and one of Hungary's leading ufologists. Moon Fong Chung Moon, representing Hong Kong. Moon Fong Chung Moon is the chairman of the Hong Kong UFO Club. N. Michael Hesseman, representing the Vatican. Michael Hesseman started his career as a German journalist and author writing about UFOs, and soon his attention turned to Catholicism, having written numerous books on both subjects. In 1999, he was accredited to the Holy See Press Office, the official news of the activities of the Pope in various departments within the Vatican. In 2010, the Wall Street Journal described him as a religious historian who helps the Vatican date relics. Lastly, the Prince of Liechtenstein, Hans Adam II, was also on the guest list, but at the last moment, he was unable to attend. Another person who was scheduled to be in attendance but was unable to make it at the last minute was Jacques Vallée, who would be representing the United States of America, along with Donald Schmidt. Also present was the Granada ambassador to China, Denise Antoine, and Russian cosmonaut Anatoly Artsebarsky. Other attendees were a delegation from the People's Government Administration of Shandong Province, Hunan Provincial People's Government Delegation, Delegation from Heizei City Administration, 
the Chinese International Foreign Ministry Association, China International Trade Promotion Committee, Vladimir Platonov, the President of the Moscow Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Song Yingdong, Professor of Nanjing University, the Association of Industrial Parks of Russia, representatives of the Russian helicopter industry, and many other business groups from within Russia and China. Over the course of the weekend, many of the invited ufologists gave presentations on the state of ufology in their country. Articles of association were created for the forming of the Five Continents Forum. The Articles of Association cover general provisions, rules for membership, the scope of business, and general organization bylaws. The Articles also outline the establishment of an official venue in China. The 26-page Articles of Association are linked in the description. Another facet of the Five Continents Forum is to promote cooperation amongst governments and business interests for cutting-edge technologies relating to space, aviation, and interplanetary exploration. The members present voted for Jin Fan to be the president of the new organization. A central objective of the meeting was the creation of an organization bringing together the main UFO movements of the five continents to officially request the United Nations reopen the initiative originally proposed by Grenada in 1979 to investigate UFOs on a global level. Now, this initiative is very significant and everyone in the UFO community should be paying attention to the Five Continents UFO Forum which is scheduled to meet again in mid-2020. It should be emphasized that China allows this organization to exist, and that the city of Hazy is going to be the home of the new building, as well as paid for the travel fare for all of the participants. These facts show that the Chinese government is closely related to, if not totally spearheading, this initiative. This initiative taking place at the same time that America has been releasing UFO information does not seem like a coincidence, and in fact, many of the members have been in contact with To The Stars Academy, so perhaps in the future we might see these two groups collaborate towards their shared goals. Another thing to consider is that although it was difficult to find information about this story, I was able to do so. So I'm sure that intelligence communities from around the world are also aware of this group and their goals. We shall watch developments in this field with great interest.